Good afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. I also would like to acknowledge my co-authors, Kenny, Yonki, Rajesh, and uh, Archan and Rajesh. Today, I'm going to talk about our VR-based uh, system, MFSD, which facilitates empathetic app design for accessibility. Suppose you are a mobile app developer. You are probably young and healthy. So it would be uh, difficult for you to understand the usability problems that impaired users would face during using your apps. A possible way to overcome this is to evaluate your application with impaired users. However, users have diverse impairments, and it is impossible to find all target impaired users and gain, access, gain repeatable access to them. Furthermore, for mobile and wearable applications, usage environment needs to be considered in design as well. To this end, we present MPSD which allows uh, developers, to e developers to evaluate, evaluate their applications usability in the perspective of impaired users in VR. To use MFSD, user, user holds a dummy smartphone and does touch interaction on it. The physical dummy phone, however, does not uh, execute application binary. What executes the application is the uh, mobile emulator under the hood. Uh, the mobile emulator is running on another computer. The system outputs impairment uh, uh, augmented view to the VR display. So through the VR display, users can experience impairments in VR. The system also tracks hands and phone using an RGB depth camera to, and after tracking, the system renders them in the virtual world. So let's see how the system works. The, uh, this shows the mobile interaction inside the VR. The, the user clicks the physical phone as shown on the right side while seeing the app's response through the virtual phone in, on the left side. The system is applying the image effect vignette to simulate glaucoma, which presents loss of peripheral vision. And the stage is also able to simulate application usage environment, such as a crowded street, and it also allows navigation inside VR. I will now discuss how impaired view is composed in VR. The, the mobile emulator executes unmodified app binary, such as APK file for an Android. The system captures emulator's screen and renders them on the virtual phone. However, with the virtual phone alone in VR, users cannot click where they're supposed to do. Users need to be see their fingers in VR to click, uh, click the dummy phone precisely. The system tracks phone and hands, uh, hands movement and renders them in VR. Uh, to enable touch in, uh, interaction with the emulator, the system captures touch events on the dummy phone and feeds them to the emulator. The user is able to click the emulator uh, through the pitch phone screen. Ambient objects are constructed from the scene database. It, can, it contains shapes and location of uh, amb ambient objects. Lastly, IO perturbations are applied to the VR outputs to simulate impairment. The system applies image effects uh, for simulating low vision impairment and applies uh, audio effects for simulating hearing loss impairment. So our, question, our research questions include, can you build a working solution that has su sufficient performance at the millimeter level of tracking accuracy and less than 200 milliseconds of end-to-end -end latency. And is the system usable so that our users are able to use the solution naturally? And are, are the simulated impairments realistic? In developing the system, we had to address technical challenges uh, to synchronize the real world and the virtual world. Uh, mirroring hands and phone to VR need to be uh, fast and accurate. Otherwise, visual and tactile perceptions of the touch interaction will be inconsistent and users could not touch where they're supposed to do. Second, a multi -device, a fast multi-device operation. The virtual phone, physical phone, and the emulator should operate as if they were a single smartphone. Let's move on to the first one, accurate mirroring of hands and phone. To mirror the phone and hand, uh, the system needs to track them in an accurate manner. For the tracking, we mount an RGB depth camera on the VR headset. The RGB depth camera provides color images along with the depth values associated to each point. As the camera and VR headset are physically aligned, 
the virtual phone and hands can be placed uh, easily in VR once the tracking is done. For the phone tracking, we use uh, visual markers, which offer high tracking accuracy. We display visual markers on the dummy physical phone screen and use a picture taken from the camera to uh, track the phone. The tracking gives the position and orientation of the dummy phone rel relative to the camera. The hand tracking works in following steps. The system first performs foreground segmentation. It filters out points uh, that does not belong to the hand. It then constructs a surface mesh, which represents a 3D shape of the hand. Finally, in the virtual world, the mesh is rendered along with the image of the user's own hand. Combined with phone tracking, this, this allows users to do touch interaction while seeing their fingers in VR. So our answer to the first question, question is yes. We can build a sufficiently accurate working solution, and we will see evaluation on this later. Let's move on to the next one, low latency mirroring of hand. Rendering a complex 3D object demands a long rendering time. So in mirroring hand, uh, virtual hand 3D structure uh, uh, is represented as a mesh. In our initial naive implementation, we included all foreground points to the mesh, and it resulted in 300 milliseconds of rendering time, which was too high so that virtual hands were not responsive to the physical hands movement. We speeded up rendering time of virtual hand by applying mesh simplification. We construct the mesh with uh, fewer points by downsampling. However, to preserve uh, control of the hand, we downsample only uh, interior points. With this approach, we generate a simpler mesh, and this reduced the rendering time to 26.9 milliseconds. However, uh, simplifying the mesh may negatively affect visual quality of the virtual hand. So to measure the image quality degraded by this process, we use the common uh, measure for image similarity, SSIM. It takes the value between 0 and 1 and becomes 1 when two images are perfectly identical. We compared hands in images uh, rendered from the original mesh and simplified mesh. The result showed SSIM score of uh, 0.976 in average, which tells that two images looks almost the same. Let's move on to the next challenge, uh, fast multi-device operation. The main bottleneck in multi-device operation was streaming emulator screen uh, to VR and rendering them, renders them on the virtual phone. We found that overhead of mirroring the emulator's screen is proportional to the resolution. So in, uh, in our initial implementation, we, the system streams the emulator screen at its original resolution, 1080p, and we noticed that the rendering speed of the virtual phone was only 18 frames per second, uh, which was uh, very low. We resolved this issue by reading the e emulator's screen at a lower resolution. We achieved uh, 57 uh, frames per second at the resolution of 485 by 863. We also observed that apps content are still legible at this lower resolution. So the downsampling would, is acceptable for usability evaluation purpose. We uh, evaluated end-to-end -end latency of the system to answer the research questions. Can you build a low latency working solution? We implemented the system on uh, the hardware on the slide. Uh, VR headset, two smartphones, and an RGB depth camera, and a computer. We use a popular game engine, Unity, for physics simulation, uh, graphics, and audio rendering in VR. With this implementation, we first examined end-to-end -end latency of touch interaction. We measured the time difference between the moment of click on the uh, physical dummy smartphone and the moment of corresponding response on the virtual phone. The result shows 20, uh, 20, 237 milliseconds of total latency. The main portion of the latency came from the emulator, so I think that the portion can be reduced as Android emulator keeps improving its performance. We may further reduce the latency from networking by uh, replacing a Wi-Fi connection to wired, uh, wired connection. Similarly, we also evaluate the end-to-end -end latency of the virtual hand. We measured time difference between physical hand movement and the virtual hand movement. And the result shows 170 milliseconds of total latency. The two, two latency numbers tell that Infestic can support 
real-time uh, interaction for most mobile applications uh, in VR. And further optimization on latency can enable uh, low latency interaction apps uh, such as games. So our answer to can you build a low latency working solution is almost. But in the user studies, we saw that the latency is acceptable uh, to users. Our next question, is the system usable? Uh, we conducted user studies to answer if users can, the, uh, users can use the solution naturally and if the simulated, simulated impairments are realistic. We recruited 12 participants and asked them to perform certain mobile application uh, use tasks, including real-world apps uh, such as searching on mobile Chrome or adding an alarm on Google Clock. We also included controlled pointing tasks to quantify the user performance. We try to see if users can click uh, where they're supposed to do in VR. The participants perform the tasks under various conditions with physically generated impairments by commercial hardware impairment simulators and or with virtually simulated impairments uh, by MPSD, our system. So MPSD is able to simulate various uh, impairments including visual and audio impairment. Among those, we chose to compare MPSD uh, to commercial hardware cataract and glaucoma simulators. We first measured uh, user's touch heel ratio with, without simulated impairment, like this. The proposed, wo proposed was to evaluate, uh, compared to a real smartphone, how realistic the virtual phone is. So in this task, how, uh, a hit is registered when the user taps on anywhere on the target button and otherwise a miss is registered. The results show that like a physical smartphone, the participants could click, uh, click the buttons precisely on the uh, virtual phone. We further measured uh, touch of center distance, uh, uh, the distance between the button's center and user's click. The results again show that users' perform, uh, performance under two conditions was similar. Uh, the absolute difference of off-center distance between two conditions were only 2.2 millimeter. If you consider the width of a finger, and then uh, you can see the, uh, see the difference, 2.2 millimeter is uh, small enough for touch interaction. This shows that users could touch on the virtual phone where they're supposed to do. Users also told that uh, experience of using virtual phone is equivalent to using, uh, using a real smartphone. Similarly, participants performed uh, the same tasks but with simulated cataract. We used the hardware simulator as a baseline and evaluated how MPSD is close to the hardware simulators. For the simulated cataract, the difference of uh, off-center touch distance and touch head ratio were 1.72 millimeter and 0.91%. We did the same comp comparison for simulated cat uh, glaucoma, and the results were 1.11 millimeter and 0.51%. Uh, percent. The results show that uh, user performance between hardware simulator and MPSD was similar. And users also found that the experience of using the hardware simulators and MPSD to be similar. Okay, uh, let me conclude my talk. I present MPSD, a VR-based system uh, that allows for empathetic app design for accessibility. We achieved millimeter level of accuracy and low enough latency that is acceptable to users such that they can interact naturally in VR. We also uh, developed realistically simulated impairments. And so, MPSD is about real apps, real, real app interaction, and real devices in emulated environments. So, absent impairment simulation, MPSD can be used to test any mobile and wearable applications under different environmental contexts, such as uh, vehicle dashboard application while driving. So, please come to our demo tonight, and thank you. I am happy to take questions.